we really want to identify what are your goals? What are your top three goals? And then we measure objective markers. And from there, we decide how often we're going to redraw blood work and look at these objective markers or not. And this is an ongoing process. This isn't a one-time thing where you come and you get this big report and you walk away. The real power is in the relationship because we're not static individuals. Like our life is changing constantly and, and our needs when it comes to health is, is evolving constantly. So this isn't something you come for once, not something you come for a year. This is a relationship. This is your medical home where you live and you develop this relationship with a health coach and a physician who knows you on a deeper level than anyone has ever, ever known you. Like, you know, the genomics, the blood work, all of it. Um, so I think that's how people should think of it is really, is you think about your box as, as your home, as your fitness home. This is kind of your, your medical home. Hello, and welcome to Pursuing Health. I'm Dr. Julie Fouché, family physician and former CrossFit Games athlete. Here, I bring you information and inspiration to help bridge the gap between fitness and medicine and support your journey toward your healthiest self. This is a podcast episode that I have been eager to share with you all for quite some time now, and I cannot believe that today is finally the day. Today, we announced the launch of CrossFit Precision Care, which is a partnership between CrossFit and Wild Health to deliver the most cutting edge primary care to the CrossFit community. Here, I share a conversation with both Eric Rosa, CrossFit CEO, and Dr. Matt Dawson, Wild Health CEO, about exactly what CrossFit Precision Care is and how it came to be. Now, I'm not going to spend too much time talking about it here because we get into all of the exciting details in the episode, but just know that I could not be more enthusiastic to see my worlds collide in such a big way to bring this service to the CrossFit community. It's really beyond my wildest dreams. Now, there are so many people to be grateful for who have made this vision a reality. Eric and Matt are two of them, but I also have to give a big shout out to the other two Wild Health and CrossFit Precision Care co-founders, Dr. Mike Mallon, who's Wild Health's chief medical officer, and Lincoln Brown, who's Wild Health's chairman and also the owner of 13-year affiliate CrossFit Maximus. There are also so many other people to thank from both CrossFit and Wild Health who've been working tirelessly to bring CrossFit Precision Care to life. So here we go with the episode. Before we dive in, as always, I want to make it clear that this podcast is for general information only and does not provide medical advice. I recommend that you seek assistance from your personal physician for any health conditions or concerns. So with that, here we go. Well, this is very exciting. I am here with Eric Rosa, CEO of CrossFit. And Matt Dawson, CEO of Wild Health, and we just announced our CrossFit Precision Care partnership launching. And we have all been talking about this for well over a year now, but we finally get to talk to everyone else and share the backstory of how it all came about. So I'm super excited that we're all here. I'm super excited to be with you. (laughs) Um, So I first just have to say thank you to both of you, because I feel like right now I am one year out of residency and I, we have an opportunity in front of us that I thought might not even be possible 10 years from now. You know, I had um, early on in med school had been involved in CrossFit, had seen what happens in the CrossFit affiliate and had seen in contrast how poorly our healthcare system was creating health. And it was so apparent that the CrossFit affiliate really could be the center of primary care and the center of health of the future. And I thought, okay, I'm going to do this one step at a time. When I graduated from residency last year, I was planning to open my own small direct primary care practice to start chipping away. And then because I met both of you, we're now having the opportunity to do that on a much bigger scale, much more quickly. So thank you guys both for doing everything that you've done and um, to make this possible. Well, Julie, I think Matt and I would both, not to make this a mutual love fest, but Matt (laughs) Matt and I would both concur that this, none of this would have happened without you, um, including the fact that you introduced us. But I think a lot of the vision has come from you as well as other folks like Lincoln Brown and Mike Mallon and pulling this all together. Yeah. And it's, and it's just extreme. You said you all were both super excited. I would say I'm super, super excited (laughs) just to, just to one up you. Cause I think we, um, I've been crossfitting for over 10 years and, um, we've been trying to kind of uh, change healthcare from the medical standpoint for the last few years and, and, and operationalize and execute on precision medicine and, and CrossFit has been doing that for years, but from more of a fitness and community standpoint. So to be able to come together 
and use kind of our combined superpowers. I'm just really excited what that means for CrossFitters and, and patients going forward. So I would love to, to, for us to share some of that backstory about how we all met and how this all came about. And it really started last year, Eric, with you buying CrossFit. Um, so can you just tell us a little bit about how that all came together? And then as you faced this, um, this task of leading CrossFit into its next phase, what role health was playing in your mind? Sure. Yeah. I mean, I think after a lifetime of being passionate around fitness and, um, and frankly, having it serve my mental as well as my physical health. And I found my closest friendships were around it and working out alone was a great way to de-stress and get me out of a funk. Um, I discovered CrossFit 12 years ago and it kind of changed everything because it, it catapulted everything to another level for me. And um, I found myself in the best shape of my life. It's such a stereotype now to say that about CrossFit, but you know, and I was already 40 and I just didn't think it was possible. I was looking at a, you know, a long, st- slow and steady decline kind of, and then that it inflected me back upwards. And it was really exciting to see something impact my health like that. And what struck me was there was, there was no contribution from the healthcare system to my health at all. And I kind of had a feeling it would be there for me if I got some disease or, or something like that, but, but that it wasn't there in a, in a way that was more proactive to, you know, to, to bring me forward, but CrossFit was working for that. And I think that planted some seeds for me early on. Um, and then about um, three years later, about a little over nine years ago, I got this crazy idea into my head and, and told my friends, hey, if I could do anything when I'm done in the technology industry, I'd love to lead cross into the future. And everyone told me I was crazy. One, because I didn't have the background in fitness. Two, because fitness wasn't a lucrative industry the way technology was. And three, because CrossFit was privately held by Greg, who had had, had stated publicly he'd never sell it. Um, but, you know, I'm not super easily deterred, I guess. And um, nine years later, when the opportunity or eight years later, when the opportunity uh, came around, um, I guess I was kind of ready to, to seize it. Um, and then um, a few months later, I found myself um, talking to you on the phone, Julie, we were kind of introduced. And then um, I told you, you told me you had just moved to, uh, to Nashville. And I was, it just so happened coincidentally that I was going to be in Cookville um, a few weeks later and you came to Cookville and we uh, ended up hitting it off. And while everyone else was inside in, in Matt Fraser's house, yeah. watching the UFC fight, you and I hung out in the backyard and, and I think talked till probably midnight or later. It was and well past my bedtime, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, me too. And uh, geeked out on a bunch of health stuff and we just found a lot of commonality. And I think within a week of that, probably you, um, you reached out and said, you got to meet these guys. You got to meet these guys from Wild Health. I think you'd really like them. And yeah. so that's my recollection of how it all started. I don't know if you have a different one because that may not be accurate. I <laughs> well, I, it sounds, it sounds familiar. I th- I don't know exactly about the timelines, but I know it was shortly after our chat in Cookville that I found myself in Lexington, Kentucky for a couple of weeks, just by chance. And at that point, um, Lincoln Brown, who you mentioned, who's also an affiliate owner and had been on Wild Health's board introduced me to Matt for the first time. And I, well, I guess he had introduced me maybe a year before we talked on the phone once when I was still in residency and I didn't, I I wasn't really in a place to be able to fully understand what Wild Health was and what they were doing, but met Matt in person for the first time here in Lexington and was just really blown away by what they had built. Um, So could you, Matt, just talk a little bit about how Wild Health started and um, your vision and what you had built up until last year. Sure. So um, Wild Health came about from, we just saw a, a, um, a real difference and a real delta between where the science was and where what medicine was doing. Um, Eric mentioned not really having a, a contribution from the medical system to his health um, because he's been pretty healthy and that's how medicine has been practiced. It's been reactive. It's been, if you get sick, then we're there for you, but we don't do very much to prevent 
and to optimize health. Mm -hmm. And um, we thought there was a real opportunity to do that. Um, so Mike and I started Wild Health and we started doing it. What we really noticed is there was a lot of science coming out around genomics mm -hmm. and precision medicine, but no one was actually practicing that way. So we very quickly um, realized that if we took a really holistic view of someone's health, uh, then we're going to have a lot better results and we can help prevent disease and help optimize folks to keep them from getting sick. Uh, similar to CrossFit. CrossFit has the, the kind of the, uh, uh, the sickness, wellness, fitness mm -hmm. paradigm. And if you get very fit, then that helps insulate you from disease. So we have a very similar approach. We try to not be reactive, but actually optimize mm -hmm. folks. So what we do and what the patient experience will look like for CrossFit Precision Care is every patient we see, we start by sequencing their DNA. Um, that's kind of like your operating system, but it's just a small piece of the puzzle. Uh, we can look at all kind of the advantages and disadvantages you have with these single nucleotide polymorphisms. We also need to take a really deep dive into where you are, because if you've been crossfitting, you're going to express your genes differently based on what you, and whatever you eat, you're going to express genes differently, your stress levels. And so we need to see where you are now and your potential and talk to you and take a lot of information and questionnaires as well. And then we can design a system to really optimize your health and keep you from, from getting mm -hmm. sick. Um, I would love to, to ask you, Eric, uh, when, before we even met, I was following along just because I am uh, passionate about CrossFit as well. And I saw very early that you uh, kind of talked about CrossFit being the world's leading platform for health, happiness, and performance. And when I saw that, that stuck in my mind, the order of the words is what jumped out to me because I'd always thought about CrossFit as performance, but not necessarily where I went to for health or happiness. Can you tell me about why you chose those words and why you put them in that order? Yeah. Um, I thought a lot about um, leading up to and following um, the acquisition. I thought a lot about what I get out of CrossFit and what I've seen as an affiliate owner. And I also had a couple CrossFit gyms at the tech company that I worked, uh, that I led. And, um, I thought a lot about what people get out of CrossFit. And those were the three words that popped up um, for me. And to your point, Matt, I think the public image of CrossFit as being kind of, you know, all about performance wasn't actually what kept people coming in. Um, it, it was actually something different. And, um, and it was, you'll notice the aesthetics weren't in there either, although one could <laughs> talk about those as well. Um, and I felt like what kept people uh, kept people coming in was the fact that they realized they were healthier than they'd ever been. And that this was that the happiness side was, I think, multifaceted. One was it was a time in your day that was good that you could count on to be um, to be a certain way and to be really great, regardless of what was happening on the outside. But then also um, being part of this community and so on would have um, would have kind of further lasting impacts as well. And so um, that's that's kind of how I came to it. And I thought of it as a, as a Venn diagram where these these three things are not always perfectly aligned. And I'll, I'll give you an example is um, I got the most serious about the CrossFit Open probably about four years ago. And because I'm, you know, probably a little too competitive by nature, I was just pushing myself really hard and was not living up to where I wish I was, right? Rather than enjoying the ride, which I do now with the CrossFit Open, I would push myself too hard, um, redo workouts when probably my body wasn't up to redoing workouts, <laughs> et cetera. And it wasn't necessarily good. I think it was fine for my health at the time, but it wasn't really good for my happiness. And so I thought a lot about the Venn diagram and wanting to live in that sweet spot where I'm trying to optimize performance in a way that is compatible with optimizing my happiness and my health. And I think we probably all know people who, who skew too much towards one of these three attributes. So that was always my vision, although we've never portrayed it that way, is that this is a Venn diagram and we want, I want to be, and I want other people to be right in that sweet spot. And as I talk to, you know, members of my affiliate and so on, I just kind of found that to be the case over and over again. And that sweet spot's different for different people. Right. But but it's you want to get where those three things overlap. Absolutely. Um, what's the most number of times you've repeated an open workout? 
Oh, uh, just just twice. Just twice. Okay. All right. What, I beat what about you. you? What about you? <laughs> I think I've I think I've re- redone one three times. That the one we've had it as a we had it as a repeat this year. It was the one with box jump overs and um dumbbell snatches. Yeah, I I I redid that one as yeah. well. I did it, we did it once and about 80% of the way through I looked up and realized I wasn't going to beat my score and I just <laughs> <laughs> Right. And the funny thing is that was a workout it was a year after I was done training for the games. I was just doing it for fun. I think I was trying to help my team qualify or something. Maybe that was the reason, but yeah, it's interesting how the health, happiness and performance all <laughs> all intersect. Yeah. Um, but I think one of the other unique things that we realized through this process is how uniquely CrossFit is positioned to provide healthcare, you know, compared to any other, other fitness company, CrossFit has always really been rooted in health. And I think that that, um, really came out when we started exploring this idea. So I, you know, I had met Matt, I was learning more about wild health. One of the things that I was most excited about with wild health, obviously the precision medicine and all the data, but also they had created a fellowship program to be able to train doctors and health coaches. And they had also created a lot of technology around their process and an algorithm, which really positioned them well to be able to scale what they were doing and reach a lot more patients. Um, And so that was sort of in the back of my mind. But then I think that another thing that happened, Eric, was we we were catching up on the phone about something and you asked me if I would uh, talk to someone who had some ideas around health and you just wanted to get my feedback on them. And I happened to be with Lincoln at the time. um, And I said, do you mind if Lincoln joins? Cause I don't really know much about the business side of this. Um, And so after that conversation, we all met, you met Lincoln. And and by the way, that could have been the weirdest interview ever for that candidate. About hiring and he had to interview with, Two, two people he didn't know and one whom I didn't even know at the time. <laughs> <laughs> right. It was a strange uh, sequence of events. But basically from that call, you ended up meeting Lincoln. I know you guys would hit it off because you have a lot in common with your tech backgrounds and affiliate owners and passion for CrossFit. But um, it just sparked this flood of ideas about what CrossFit health could be and and how CrossFit really was uniquely positioned to potentially provide health care. And then um, Lincoln and I and a few other people came out to Boulder and we had a great brainstorming session about CrossFit health and the future um, of what it could be. And I think we all left that weekend really excited about the potential for CrossFit to provide healthcare. And then through that same time, you started with Wild Health as a patient yourself and were able to really see um, what the process was like. So I'd love for you to share anything you're comfortable with about you know, what you saw in the process and what most excited you about wild health. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, as I mentioned, I think seeing CrossFit's impact on my health and the lack of impact from the medical system and, you know, what we call healthcare, um, which is, you know, others have used this term, but it's much more sick care kind of Mm -hmm. really made it even more stark. And I thought about, um, and this, as you said, Julie, this really came about at this, this offsite as well, because we, I think we must've looked at 30 to 50 different ideas, right. For how we could uh, take this platform of CrossFit health and expand it. And this was the one that stuck. And I think so many what huge me- pieces of paper that stuck up on those windows behind <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. We're covered. Um, what stuck with me about this idea was that. CrossFit had linked fitness and health, but hadn't linked um, or performance and health, however we want to say it. But no one yet had linked fitness to health care. And so to me, it was it made so much sense that we should be linking those two and that CrossFit was the best position company in the world to do that. Um, and so w- it may seem odd to people as they hear about this and read about it and say, CrossFit's getting into healthcare, like, how does this make sense? But I would flip that around and say, how does it make sense for fitness not to be linked to healthcare? That, that, that gaping divide is certainly not in the interest of individuals. And I won't call us patients for this purpose, right? It calls individuals and how cool to have a doctor who does CrossFit and how cool to have them paired with. I I wasn't familiar with the concept of a health coach 
in a, in a medical practice, but how cool to have a, a, a health coach also who's actually got some strengths that doctors don't always have around proactive follow-up and things like that. And to have that I health mean, coach, We're not good at proactive follow-up here. <laughs> pre- present company no, excluded, of course, right. <laughs> um, but how cool to have someone like Julia, who's my health coach, um, follow up with me proactively and you know, talk to me about what she's noticing about my, my sleep because she gets data you know, for my, for my wearables and things like that. And so that's really, um, that's been very powerful to me to have this combination of a doctor and a health coach, both of whom understand and love CrossFit. And it, it, it closes this gap that was there. And again, it was kind of an artificial gap. So that's when I think the wheels really started turning that this could be something, how exciting for people to get into. And we could talk more about the other things that I enjoy as a patient around the, uh, the, the wild health practice and, and how that's morphing into being CrossFit precision care now. Well, and I think you said something interesting there. Um, you said some people may see it weird for CrossFit to be getting into healthcare, but I would say it would be strange if CrossFit got into sick care, uh, but you already made that differentiation. I think CrossFit is already in healthcare. Uh, and it's after I said that the health, happiness and performance, like I was taken aback by that. When I started thinking about it, I realized that, um, No, like on a subconscious level, that's always how I've thought about it. Because if someone came to me and they said, I'm sick or I'm not feeling well, and I just want to be healthy, or someone just came to me and said, I want to optimize my health. um, And they asked me, should I go to a doctor's office or a CrossFit box? Uh, I wouldn't hesitate. Like, I think they're going to get a lot more benefit going to CrossFit, just the community and the fitness part. Uh, Now, if they're really sick, uh, then sure, um, our system is good at that, but that's not what we're talking about. So I think it it just makes perfect sense because I think CrossFit is already in healthcare. Uh, They're just not doing a lot of the extra things that that we're doing, and we're excited to add on to the healthcare that CrossFit is providing. That just... Reminds me exactly of what I saw when I was in that first year of med school and I had, I was very naive when I started, but I was spending a half day a week in a primary care clinic and then at night going to the CrossFit affiliate. And the contrast was so stark going to these clinics and seeing patients for 15 minutes and, you know, prescribing them high blood medication for their high blood pressure, their diabetes, and talking to them about diet and exercise. And I, I mean, I really felt like I went above and beyond trying to teach them burpees in the office or give them workouts or whatever, but no matter how hard you try, you don't see someone for six months. It's just not the setting to be able to help people make lifestyle change. And on the flip side in the affiliate, as we all know, we're seeing people dramatically change their health. They're coming off their medications, they're losing weight, they're gaining confidence, their moods are better. They have community. It's incredible. And so even, you know, for 20 years, CrossFit has been, I would argue, it has been healthcare, but now we're bringing, like Matt said, we're bringing more of the the data, the biomarkers, um, the precision uh, around the rest of, of health um, to support what's happening in the affiliates. And I think one thing that you reminded me of, me of too, Eric, I think on one of those initial calls, you said, as we were talking about this idea, you said, if we don't do this, nobody else can do this. CrossFit is so uniquely positioned to do this, um, unlike any other fitness company. And so we sort of have to. Yeah, that's always been a a precept of mine. I always say like, this has to happen. And if not us, who? And the answer is no one. Yeah, you have like a responsibility to do it. And, you know, as as a patient coming into Wild Health and doing the intake form and going, wow, these guys have doctors who do CrossFit They've got advanced genomics, and I I was already familiar with with some of the um, some of the DNA sequencing and how that how there were certain um, SNPs that were that you could actually tie with a reasonable amount of reliability to what was going on with your own health, and then advanced um, labs for you know really advanced blood work, and then on top of it, they're asking me how many burpees I can do in a minute or whatever. I'm like this is like Nirvana for me. (laughs) Like these people, (laughs) they get me, you know, I found my people kind of. Yeah. And it's, and uh, I'm excited about not having to explain to people what a burpee is on the questionnaire anymore. (laughs) Cause you get get that question from two people so much like, what is a burpee? I'm like, how do you know, not know what a burpee is? Um, And of course I was relieved that you asked me how many burpees I can do in a minute, not in seven (laughs) minutes. Cause it falls off pretty quickly. Yeah. The zero, it's supposed to be 10, the zero had fallen off on your sheet. We'll, we'll, We'll wait for that data from you. And speaking of, of data, I think that's, I think that's one of the exciting things to me is how focused 
on data you are uh, from your, your previous life and CrossFitters in general, because we're very passionate about the data. We, one of the, I think the downfalls of medicine is, are, is physicians give advice and then you just go away and they don't really measure the results. And we're very driven by objective data. And if we come up with a goal, what is your goal? How are we going to measure that? Um, and we already, we have great data from the patients that we've seen. We, HRV goes up on average 15%, uh, hemoglobin A1C, we get good improvements. Our, the diabetic patients we see 20% have complete resolution within six months. Um, we have uh, inflammation. Uh, when people come with elevated inflammation, we have about a 59% drop in CRP. And to be able to take the results we've been getting and actually look at a CrossFit population, where people will, will actually work hard and, and put the work in. What I'm excited about is showing the world the results of CrossFit plus healthcare together. I think we're going to have incredible results bringing those together and really show people that we can do a lot more than the results we normally get in healthcare. I think it's a drop in the bucket what we normally see when we combine the community, the fitness, the precision medicine, and all of it together. I'm really excited about the data we're going to create. Yeah, Matt, one of the things you hit on around the, uh, the data and the commonized with CrossFit is this notion of delivering objective and measurable outcomes, which is, you know, near, near and dear to the heart of every CrossFitter. And I, and I found the same thing um, with, with, the, with your practice, right, where both things in my genome and my blood work, um, as well as, frankly, my sleep, were all things that we decided to optimize on. And I've been able to see um, improvements in a number of them already in a pretty short time frame, And so there is this notion of, of, you know, watching the blood work change as a result of a couple supplements, um, getting educated on, um, on some, some of my genetic material that was, uh, causing some problems for me, the way I was eating and changing my diet as a result, um, pretty powerful stuff when you can see that happen in a matter of, of a few months. Yeah, it's extremely powerful. And I think, like you said, it's just such a great fit um, for the CrossFit community who's always been so focused on data, tracking our workouts, doing end of one experiments on ourselves and, and using our performance as a guide. Now we're able to marry that with biomarkers, with um, wearables, with other things and and really create one home for your health that is CrossFit precision care that's aligned with your um, what's happening in your affiliate or with your workouts um, and also what's happening with, you know, what's going on under the hood, just looking at your blood work and everything else. Just to pick up on the theme of wearables and, and even other kinds of diagnostics, it's so, ref and I've been through several kind of, you know, direct primary care or concierge type medical practices. And, um, I haven't really gotten any help from them around, around kind of what I consider advanced diagnostics, which include genomics, but also include things like continuous glucose monitors and sleep monitors um, and other, both other wearables and then other diagnostics like my gut microbiome or my epigenetic age. If I wanted someone to help me interpret these or recommend a test, I couldn't have had less help, I think, from my other experiences. And again, these were kind of expensive and, and frankly, pretty talented people that I was working with at the time. And so it's just been so nice to have um, to have partners who are up to date on the latest uh, the latest trends that that don't necessarily come from the AMA yet. Right. We, we may have to wait 20 years for that in some cases. Yeah, there's so many great tools out there. You just mentioned CGM. I mentioned hemoglobin A1C data. Part of the reason we have so much success with that is we're putting CGMs on our patients all the time. There's so much data. And to think that the healthcare system isn't interested in that, uh, it's a shame. And you mentioned sleep as well. When we are trying to help patients optimize their sleep, we're going to give them suggestions. But what good are the suggestions if we're not measuring the progress? And so to have a sleep tracker on, uh, to wear a CGM, to see how things are, are going, that just seems like common sense. And it's unfortunate the healthcare industry doesn't always um, go along with common sense and use these tools that are there. Well, I think one thing, and Matt, if I can ask you, maybe ask you this question. One of the problems that you hear is that doctors are so busy with their clinical work, they don't have time to keep up on, on the latest things, right? If it, unless it's a, 
a pharma company or a device company that's coming in to buy them lunch and have a, you know, a quote unquote education session. How did, um, how were you all able to carve out the time to get up to speed on, on the latest stuff? I've been the beneficiary of that, but I've never asked the question. Yeah, it's a great question. I think the, the simple answer for Mike and I is just that we were passionate about it. That's all that we lived and breathed it and we were doing it for ourselves. And it made sense that we do it for our, our patients and friends and family as well. Now we understand that that's not every physician's passion. So I think there's two solutions to that. First off, we're only bringing people on board. The physicians are going to be CrossFitters. They're not, they're not just physicians who understand CrossFit, but they're CrossFitters. So they have a similar mentality. And then the second way that we help people keep up is, is we automate a lot of it. When Mike and I first started doing this, when we'd have hundreds of pages of data, DNA, blood work, microbiome, phenotypic data, patient questionnaires, it would take 10 hours for us to comb through this. And if we spent that much time clinically, then we're not be able to keep up with all the latest things as well. So we've actually have created software, um, through, we've hired multiple uh, data scientists and, and engineers and actually created a program so that we can bring doctors in who are passionate about it. They're listening to podcasts and keeping up, but they're not having to crunch all the data. They're going to have a tool that they use. And I think um, for as a physician, one of the things that excites me the most is having this tool to be able to practice this way and then being able to practice with people who take personal responsibility, like CrossFitters. Uh, I, I think if you are a physician listening to this, we, we have a training program. We have this tool. If you want to take care of this population, we'd love to have you as a part of it. Because as a physician, we can um, we have a lot of knowledge and experience, um, but we're partnering with the patient. We're going to get no outcomes unless the patient actually takes us to heart and puts it into practice. And it's so frustrating to come up with a plan for a patient. Then you see them back a few months later and nothing has changed. Whereas with CrossFitters, like they're willing to do the work. They're going to put in the hard work. So it's, it's, a, it's a physician's dream come true to be able to work with this population. So I'm just super excited about that. We have the, the tool, we have the training program, and now we've got the perfect population to apply it to. Yeah. And I would say just as a beneficiary of all the hard work that you and Mike did as someone who came in and I always had an interest in preventive medicine and using lifestyle in functional medicine. I didn't have much exposure to precision medicine before I met you both, but you know, Mike is just incredible at what he has put into this algorithm and he has done so much research um, and is really sort of the genius behind it. And it made it very easy for me to be able to learn and integrate that information and start implementing it with patients in a relatively short amount of time. Um, whereas you guys, when you started, you know, you were reading the primary research and you were implementing it and sorting through all the data for each patient, which just takes a lot of time. And it's hard for you to then see enough patients to make an impact. But now you know, we're in a, in a position to be able to, to really see a lot of patients and give this excellent type of care to a lot of people. Yeah. And you mentioned the primary literature. Yeah. We, I mean, Mike, uh, he couldn't join us on the podcast because he's not allowed to, he has to read literature all day <laughs> and just continue to, to crunch all that. But yeah, he's went through thousands uh, of papers and, and we built the systems because it, it is impossible for a physician by themselves to keep up and to be on the cutting edge. So the, the goal is we create a, a system for these physicians and health coaches to come in and to take care and deliver the best healthcare in the world to, to CrossFit members. One thing that's really cool is I think there's a lot of leverage and interplay also with the, this incredible network of, uh, of, you know, what we call the CrossFit doctors, which Julie's played, you know, a, a key role in, in uh, bringing them all through their level ones and so on. But this is a group of doctors, most of whom, the vast majority of whom are not in primary care, but who, whom I've had the privilege of dialoguing with um, probably at least a few dozen of them over the last year since I've been in this role. And there's so much commonality of, um, it, you talked about, Matt, you've got to really have the interest in it. There's so much com commonality and interest and equal belief that, um, that CrossFit is doing so much more good for people who are already, um, you know, somewhere on the wellness continuum than, uh, than traditional medicine is. And how can it be different? And I think many of these folks have not necessarily, I've heard from them, have not necessarily had the outlet to practice medicine that way. So it's been more of, um, than an, of an avocation than a vocation, how they've gotten involved. And, and what I love is I think this is going to 
liberate a lot of folks to get involved. And frankly, even um, even the health coaches, um, I think we're going to find a lot of people. And in fact, I think you already have, Julie, a lot of folks from the ranks of, um, you know, level one, two and three trainers who say, I want to keep coaching in a CrossFit gym, but maybe I was a nurse or, you know, I was a PT or whatever. And I want to be part of a medical practice who's focused, focused on this functional proactive health stuff. And, um, and, you know, go through the, uh, the fellowship here so that they can be part of this practice too. I think that's one of the most exciting things for me about all of this is I think we really have an opportunity to create a whole new healthcare system that's based on, on CrossFit, you know, meeting with a lot of these doctors and getting to know them. You're so right. They feel sort of, they feel isolated. They feel like they're practicing in this system that isn't totally congruent with what they know to be true about creating health and whether they want a different outlet to practice and maybe come in practice with us at CrossFit Precision Care, or maybe they're a specialist, but they become part of our referral network. You know, we can create almost an entirely new healthcare system with all healthcare professionals who understand and do CrossFit. And that is what's super exciting for me. I think that anyone in the, in the gym, if they have to go to, or if they want to see, you know, a physical therapist or a dietitian or a dentist or any type of healthcare professional, any type of professional in general, you know, we'd much rather it be a CrossFitter than not. And so even a plumber or an electrician. (laughs) Absolutely. Um, So that's, that's really, really exciting for me. And to be able to give doctors and health coaches the opportunity to practice in a way that is consistent with their values. I think that that to me is one of the most depressing things about, well, there's a lot of depressing things about our healthcare system, but coming from the primary care standpoint, seeing how many of my friends are just getting crushed by the system because it just it just doesn't allow them to practice in a way that's consistent with their values and this um, this opportunity gives people a way to to actually do that um, to have the support to do that and not feel like they have to do it all on their own. I mean, one of the other oh sorry Matt go ahead. I was gonna I think I missed that last part. You say you're also starting cross fit fit plumbing care. <laughs> Is that, yes. We're launching that as well. Or that's I think we're going to do the electric care first. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Maybe next year. Right. Um, I should have known there was a smart comment coming from out there. <laughs> high, high value add. Um, I was going to say one of the other things that I've really enjoyed as a patient is the cadence of interactions. So it's, it's, you know, it's amazing to have my health coach's cell number and to be able to text back and forth with a quick reminder or question reminder to me or question from me but the fact that we have formal meetings you know every month or two my recollection of kind of what life has been like for me on the other side of this for you know the first 50 years of my life or whatever is you know every six to 12 months i would go in for an appointment and get you know poked and prodded in various unpleasant ways and not really not really get much out of it, frankly. And then it was like, you know, see in six or 12 months and not really learn that much or have anything actionable to do differently. And um, there's so much more continuity now where I, I feel, and, and I like, I like the accountability, right? If, if I'm, if I've had several supplements recommended to me because, um, because of certain things we found and that I want to focus on, I want the accountability that I got to take these things because I know I'm going to see Julia again and we're going to do blood work again and figure it out. So it's totally different. And I've gone through periods of my adult life not that long ago where I went seven or eight years without a primary care doctor because I just didn't think it mattered. Didn't think it mattered at all. And I think I hear that a lot. That's pretty common for a lot of CrossFitters um, when you know they're doing a lot to take care of their health and they don't feel like the visit in the doctor's office is really adding much. Um, This might be a good opportunity just to explain what the patient experience will be like for CrossFit Precision Care. So Matt, I don't know, do you want to explain what it would be like kind of from start to finish? Uh, Sure. And maybe first answering just who is it for? Um, I think the only person this is good for are human beings. Um, (laughs) That's, that's about it. Uh, In all seriousness, we've had, we had, 
patients who medaled at the Olympics last week, and we have lots of pro athletes. I'm excited to work with CrossFit athletes and 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 data heads like you, Eric. But then we also have patients with with dementia, and we have patients who are have cancer. We have very sick patients as well. So this really is for anyone who wants to kind of optimize their care. So what the process looks like, you mentioned kind of the cadence, Eric. There's there's different options for how often you want to see your health coach and physicians. There's different kind of packages people can sign up for. Regardless of, of which of those packages someone signs up for, the goal really is holistic care, like we mentioned. So everyone starts in the same way, and they we look at the DNA, the blood work, optional microbiome, patient data. The first visit is with the physician and health coach where you go over everything. Like, this is how to optimize your life. This is um, the perfect diet for you. Here are superfoods. Here are kryptonite foods based on your genetics and blood work and your goals. And this is how you're going to sleep perfectly. Like here's some information on your chronotype, things that may benefit your sleep, uh, exercise wise exercises. Uh, our, our advice is never going to trump basic exercise science and what your goal is, whatever the patient's goal is, is what we're going to be aiming towards. But we do get some information on recovery or other things like that from the blood work and genomics and some, some clues, um, how to, optimize your stress levels and, and mindfulness, get a lot of great information. So it's a just a whole picture of your health and how to optimize. And then we really want to identify what are your goals? What are your top three goals? And then we measure objective markers. And from there, we decide how often we're going to redraw blood work and look at these objective markers or not. And this is an ongoing process. This isn't a one-time thing where you come and you get this big report and you walk away. The real power is in the relationship because um, we're not static individuals. Like our life is changing constantly and, and our needs when it comes to health is, is evolving constantly. So this isn't something you come for once, it's not something you come for a year. This is a relationship. This is your medical home where you live and you develop this relationship with a health coach and a physician who knows you on a deeper level than anyone has ever, ever known you. Like, you know, the genomics, the blood work, all of it. Um, so I think that's how people should think of it is really, is you think about your box as, as your home, as your fitness home. This is kind of your, your medical home uh, where we care for you right now. We may be optimizing you for uh, your, op the CrossFit open coming up to, to try and try to improve your friend time. But then in, Three years from now, you may be more focused on longevity, how to maximize my longevity and health span. And then three years after that, how do I prevent cancer, prevent cardiovascular disease? So this is, we want to take care of people for, for their entire life. And I think the, the unique thing, like we've already mentioned, is that um, with CrossFit Precision Care, your doctor and your health coach are CrossFitters. Um, and you'll meet more frequently, like Eric mentioned with your health coach and your health coach will be the one also following up with you and having that accountability through messaging or answering questions. Um, but I think this is also a really unique opportunity for the health coach. Like, like Eric, Eric just mentioned, um, especially for CrossFit trainers who are really interested in helping their clients with overall health. Um, so it is an opportunity to work full-time as a health coach, maybe still coach classes, um, but to be able to gain the expertise and help patients with nutrition, with sleep, with mindfulness, with um, all aspects, 360 degrees of their health um, and, and really look at the big picture. Um, so, you know, health coaches could be anyone from a CrossFit trainer to someone who already has healthcare experience who wants to work as a health coach. Um, but we're really excited about that opportunity as well, because think about, you know, my, my ideal situation would be to have your CrossFit trainer, be your health coach. So it's someone that maybe you run into in the gym a couple of times a week for class and they, they know everything about you and they can check in and say, how was your sleep last night? Or I checked your wearable data and looks like you, you know, your HRV was down, what's going on, um, to have that extra layer of accountability and really build off of what is so unique about the CrossFit community and how we have these affiliates that are already putting, um, putting everything into action and just building on that. Well, I think we should, uh, tell people if they're interested where to go yeah. to. So if you, if you are interested in, in being one of the first patients, um, or if you're interested in being a physician or health coach, you can go to care.crossfit.com and there's information about both. Um, when it comes to patients, um, we've been treating patients like this for a while, but the CrossFit community is new and different. And so we're going to launch this as a beta program. It's going to be invite only initially. So you can sign up to get an invite and we're going to be in certain states to start. I would encourage you to 
put your information in if you want to be a patient now, because depending on what state you're in, the more information we get, we'll be able to potentially hopefully go to your state sooner rather than later. So if you go to care.crossfit.com, um, enter your information and, um, we're going to in, invite you to, to be a patient, an initial patient in the beta. What we would ask is that we're really looking for folks who are really want to, um, partner with us and be a part of building this. Like we, like we're talking about these, these grandiose things of changing healthcare and building something amazing. And if we are going to do that, we need feedback from the community. So if you're interested in this type of practicing this way or, or being, being a patient or a client, um, the initial folks we're looking for are folks who are going to give us feedback and help us shape it over time as well, because it's going to be a constantly evolving thing that we're committed to just making better and better as it goes along. And, you know, I would say that before we, um, before we at CrossFit decided to partner with you all on this, um, not only did I become a patient, um, which I think has been over six months now, um, I think it's probably been about eight months, but I, um, I've referred the service to a number of uh, friends and colleagues as well. So probably close to 10 folks I know have signed up and all of them have gotten, I think, at least one or two really deep insights about their health as a result. So it makes me feel really good about, you know, kind of endorsing this as, as a patient and, and as someone who has seen their friends have positive impacts on their health from it. Yeah. The, the last I checked, you're just one referral away on your punch card from having it full. <laughs> so you're getting really close. So keep it up. <laughs> so if anyone listening wants to put Eric as their uh, referral, <laughs> you can help them out. <laughs> um, no, but I just want to add to that about this beta and how important it is that we get feedback because, you know, we are really trying to shape CrossFit precision care to meet the needs of the CrossFit community. And that's, what has been so great about the community is that we, we are shaped by feedback and even the CrossFit level one is completely different than it was when it first started primarily all because of feedback from participants. And so this is no different and we're excited to, to get started and to hear your feedback and to really create something that is unique um, for the CrossFit community and then to expand as quickly as the demand is there. Um, I also wanted to just put this out here. I know we've been talking about some big grandiose ideas in, in this partnership, but I'd love to hear from each of your perspective, what you're most excited about with CrossFit Precision Care and thinking about where we might be five years from now or 10 years from now, what you'd like to see this grow into. Well, I think for me, Julie, it's about an integrated system that's aligned with things that I believe and kind of in my heart know to be true. And I'm, I'm definitely at a period in my life where I'm thinking more and more about longevity. I think it happens to all of us. Um, and, but I still want to perform at a really high level. And I have certain performance goals in my life associated with that. And um, who doesn't want to continue to focus on their happiness and so on. And I just, I feel like this integrated system of CrossFit, um, gym membership and CrossFit precision care is the is the perfect one two punch for that um, better than any other combination I've seen. So um, I, I hope we can kind of continue to optimize that and and close the loop between the two. And I think it'll be great for individuals and for the world and all that. Yeah, I think I already mentioned it, but but it's a dream for a physician to take care of uh, patients who take personal responsibility for their health and who you can partner with and are not looking to you for the answers, but looking to you to partner and help them just, just educate them. And this is honestly for Wild Health, our physicians, this is who we are. Like this is like we're getting to take care of our, our tribe, like people that are here. I think frequently when I'm talking to um just general audiences as a physician, I have to turn down the CrossFit, CrossFit ishness uh, myself, and, and we won't have to do that uh, now with, with CrossFit Precision Care. And Eric, I didn't mention I'm going to be in Boulder by around midnight tonight for the next couple of days. So I may stop by Sanitas. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, let's hang. We could talk about that afterwards. That's great. And I couldn't find a hotel, so leave your door unlocked if you don't. <laughs> to, so. Oh, goodness. Um, well, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about, like you said, the partnership, um, because what is so missing from healthcare is the community, the ability to put this into practice. So you go to, you know, I don't think any primary care doctor would argue with you that nutrition and exercise and sleep and mindfulness and lifestyle are all the way to create health, but there is no way to implement that in the healthcare system. CrossFit has that solution because 
we have affiliates and we have community and we have coaches. Um, but then you go to the CrossFit affiliate and there is no easy way for us to be able to actually look at things like blood work or other markers that, you know, we may be, I'm surprised how many times we find people who are extremely fit, who are working out a ton, who are eating well, but we do their blood work or we uncover things that maybe they didn't know about. And so being able to find those things early and adjust lifestyle to meet their genetics or to prevent disease can make a huge impact. Um, you know, it's just because we're healthy and we work out and, you know, we're generally doing well, doesn't mean that we're immune from getting disease. It doesn't mean that we should be skipping like cancer screenings or not checking our blood work to see what's going on. Um, so I'm excited about that partnership and I'm excited about where this can go from a community perspective. So right now we didn't mention this in the, um, the patient experience, but initially we're going to be providing this care through telemedicine in order to be able to reach more people. But I think in the future, as we grow bigger and we have doctors and health coaches in every city, there's opportunities to be able to partner more closely with affiliates to be able to have a work out with your doctor, work out with your health coach or have your health coach in the same affiliate as you. And I think that's where a lot of the magic will um, be even more powerful. So I'd love to see that, you know, years down the road as we continue to grow. But like I said, I'm I'm just excited about the opportunity we have in front of us. I think CrossFit, we all know, has revolutionized fitness over the last 20 years. You go, there's now group fitness is is everywhere. Functional movement is everywhere, intensity. Um, but now we really have an opportunity, I think, to revolutionize healthcare. So I'm I'm excited about getting started. I'm just really grateful for you guys. And um, for anyone who's interested and listening, wants to hear more, you can go to care.crossfit.com. Thanks so much for tuning into the episode. You can learn more about CrossFit Precision Care and sign up for the waitlist at care.crossfit.com. I'm excited to hear what you all think and continue to evolve this service to meet your needs as we go. Again, that's care.crossfit.com to learn more. And I'll leave you with a song called Whatever Happened to Susie by Eric Rosa himself. Thanks again for tuning in. Whatever happened to Susie, I guess she's all grown up and moved away with I hope she knows. There's someone on her side It's always good to know that someone's on your side